Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Ordinary Turnover 78 and asks, Am I the a-hole for telling my mum and her husband that I can't wait to turn to 18 to leave their house? When I, 16 male, was 5, my mum, 34 female, had an affair and left me and my dad, 35 male, for a wealthier man. For two years, I only saw my mum like four or five times. I can't remember, but not more than that. Then she disappeared and didn't contact us again. I even thought that she was dead. I think my dad thought it was too much responsibility for him or was angry at my mum and somehow wanted to take everything that reminded him of her away. So he sent me to live with my maternal aunt and I only saw him like two or three times a month for half an hour. Unfortunately, my aunt died of cancer last year. I thought my dad would take me in, but he's busy with his new family, wife and kids. My grandma, dad's mother, wanted to take me in, but then my egg donor came out of the blue to take me. When she came to take me, it was the first time I saw her in nine years, and it felt weird, and it sucked that she hugged and kissed me as if nothing happened in those nine years. She married the man she left us for, and now they have three kids, 10 male, 8 female, and 7 female. I've been living with them for six months now, and I spent most of the time in my room. Since we're in another city, six hours away, and I have no friends here. We rarely speak. She tries to talk to me, but I ignore her and her husband. They try to include me in activities, but it sucks seeing them play the perfect family when I missed everything as a child, so I don't really like them. Her husband tries to make me call him dad. He tries to spend time with me and talk to me, but he knows I love tennis, so he learned about it and has listed me in tennis lessons and wants to talk about it all the time he sees me. He even wants to take me to some matches. He introduces me as his son, and I hate it since all I see is the guy that stole my mum from me when I needed her the most. It happened yesterday. He asked me to go with him to the grocery store, and then he met a friend of his, and his friend hasn't seen me in any family photo. He asked about me, then my mum's husband said, he's my firstborn. You didn't know about him because he was living with a sister of my wife's. I didn't make a scene there, but when we got out, I told him to never say he's my father. He's just a homewrecker who stole my mum. We got home, and he told my mum, that my mum, almost crying, said, you hate us that much, don't you? So I said, of course. You left me, and now you want to act like nothing happened by playing the happy family. To be honest, I can't wait to turn 18 and leave, and I'm not sure if I ever want to see you again. She started crying, and her husband comforted her, so I went to my room. They tried to talk to me, but I've just ignored them. I told a friend of mine about this, and he says, I'm the a-hole. Wow. Now, obviously, this is a not the a-hole to me at all in this situation. I can't imagine what would be going through OP's mind to be abandoned by both of your parents and then to waltz in like nine years later and just act like nothing has happened from what I'm reading in this post and that's like there's something missing here there's no acceptance of what they've done to OP there's no apology for what they've done to OP I'm not saying it affects things at all but you know not even offering that to OP is just heartbreaking for me and it almost felt like there was an assumption that OP should just acclimatize to his new family instantly and almost be appreciative of it. But in the comments, we're going to start with Publius who says, not the a-hole. You've been abandoned by both your parents. Yes, your dad too. You're allowed to be angry about it. Miss McLean replies to that and says, I've been in those shoes and still think about it to this day. How my parents both at separate times decided that they would be better off without me and my brother. I still have severe abandonment issues, even when they came back into my life. Always floating around in the back of my head. Not the a-hole OP. I know you said they're not close by, but see if you can't call a friend of yours about contacting a lawyer to work towards getting emancipated early. It's not healthy to be in this environment. Seagull stealing chips. Damn those seagulls, says. Not the a-hole at all. This is so effed up. If they want to make amends and have a relationship with you, they should first apologize and admit that your mum completely abandoned you. She can't just come in nine years later and expect everything to go back to normal. And the guy calling you his son is insane. You don't know him. K Sharp replied to this one and said his stepdad called him my firstborn. I wonder if stepdad is actually bio dad. 
and a lot of people go off wandering down that route as well. Malibu Cat says not the a-hole. I'm so sorry for the life you've had. It's hard being a teenager under any circumstances, but you've been dealt a bad hand and your feelings are valid. Is there any chance you could still live with your grandmother? Your mother and her husband are trying to make up for the wrong she has done, but if they care, they might let you live with your grandmother if it would make you happier. If that isn't possible, see if you can get into therapy. It won't change your situation, but it will help you cope with it. Good luck, and I hope things work out. Dark Angel says you have a choice here to be angry and bitter about the past your whole life, which is a choice, or you can choose to leave the bitterness behind. Your mum was 18 when she had you, basically still a kid herself. She didn't know who she was or what life was all about. She made some not great choices. However, she's trying to make up for it all. She is trying to make up for all of it. Maybe open up to getting to know these people, work with a therapist on the past trauma, and give your new life a chance. You seem to think it's too little too late. That's never the chance with parents. Try to connect with your mum despite the anger. Someday you may be glad you did, or sad if you push her away again, because she has made mistakes when she was young. And one more from Funny Alternative who says, Definitely not the a-hole. I'm going to get downvoted for this, but I know the majority of people can't empathize like I can. I think it might be possible that your mum and stepdad know how bad they fucked you over. People can change a lot in that time and are trying in their own way to make it up to you. They're doing a shit job, especially without starting with an apology. But there is a possibility that if you all got some therapy and they were given the tools to be able to do the job properly, they could actually become a couple of adults in your life that you could depend on. That being said, I don't blame you if you can't ever forgive them or let any of it go. I just wanted you to know that you guys had a really shitty relationship for the beginning of your life, but it doesn't have to be like that forever. I guess I'm sort of saying, keep an open mind, and of course if you go down that path, keep your guard up for as long as it takes for you to feel safe with them. But you are definitely not an arsehole for what you said. Then first OP gives an update on the same post, which says, My mum and stepdad have been so apologetic. They tried to talk to me, but I ignore them. I know it makes me sound terrible, but I can't. I've tried to look at them differently since I posted here the first time, but I can't. Heaven knows I've tried. I want to try therapy. I need someone to talk to and let my mum know it again, but her husband keeps insisting that we must go together to do some family therapy. I don't really want him there because I don't see the point of it. So I'm going to do what somebody suggested. I told him that I'll do therapy with him and once we are there, I tell the therapist that I don't feel comfortable with him there. Maybe that works. I don't even know if this is moral or even fair, but I don't know what else to do since he has refused to let me go by myself. He already booked the appointment. It's this Tuesday at 3pm, so that's what's happening now. I'll let you know if my plan works. Second update, mum and dad in quotes tries to fix what they did but what they don't understand is that once a heart is broke there is no way of putting it together as it used to now they cry as if they were the victims here <laughs> isn't that hilarious and someone asked op how he is doing he says i'm doing a little better therapy sessions are just the therapist in me except for the first one in which my dad was present because he wanted to tell me something important anyway i'm doing better for myself I'm stuck here, but I'll make sure this man pays for my college. I move out anyway. Then OP's last update, which says, Mum's a fair partner, the man she left me for, now came up with a great idea of adopting me. I'm like, dude, no matter how hard you try, I'll never forgive you and you'll never be my dad. The jerk brought me a car on my 17th birthday, and that's when he came with a wonderful idea of adopting. I haven't used that damn car. My friends call me ungrateful because they wish their parents gifted them such a thing. The only good thing about living with them is that I can have my privacy and they respect it. Sometimes I feel sorry for him because he's trying so much to make it up to me, but then I remember all the damage he caused and many abandonment issues I have because of that. My mum, well, we kind of improved our relationship. I wouldn't say I trust her, I wouldn't say I love her either, but, but we've got to have open conversations in which we bear our souls. I don't buy some of her crappy excuses, but others seem reasonable even more now that I look backwards. We've had some therapy sessions together in which we both cry like babies. <laughs> and then OP's last comment in which he replies to a user asking him about his relationship with his siblings. And he says, I don't really know the kids. We've interacted a few times, but we aren't like super close. And there were still a lot of comments after this story about questioning 
if stepdad was the actual bio dad in the end. People pointing out clues like the bio dad in the beginning not wanting him anymore, stepdad saying that he's his firstborn and wanting to tell him something important in the therapy session, buying him a car, etc, etc. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? What do you think is going on? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. Now, before we do get into our next story, it does have an update as well, but it does contain verbal and physical abuse, miscarriage, child abandonment, and mentions of suicide as well. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. And it's titled, Am I the a-hole for dating my ex-brother-in-law from Lonely Combination 54? This is a throwaway. I think backstory is needed to understand it more. I, 32 female, have been with my ex-husband Mike, 34 male, for five years and married for three. He was physically and emotionally abusive to me. Apart from that, he was a cheater, a liar, and also withheld my finances for a long time. He is the reason why I lost my first child in my womb. I know I should have left him. I was stupid. I got pregnant again with my daughter Kelly, by female. When I was pregnant with Kelly, I got into an argument and he pushed me on the floor. Not only that, he hit my head with his beer bottle. I don't know how I survived. I ran away from home after I recovered a little and went to my brother-in-law Tom's 39 male's place for help. I went to him because he told me several times to leave his brother, but I didn't listen to him. I knew my parents wouldn't help me. They threatened to kick me out when I first went for their help. Only Tom helped me. When he learned about what Mike had done, he was enraged. He went to his house to beat him, but I had to plead with him to stop because I don't want him to get into any trouble. With his help, I filed a case against my husband. I had evidence that he beat me and my miscarriage was not an accident. He only got six months in jail, an additional six months for community services. Plus, he is only allowed supervised visitation of Kelly, which is limited, but he preferred not to get involved in her life. Tom has already cut his brother off from his life the second he learned he was abusive just like their dad, my ex-father-in-law. Tom's father was just like Mike. He would beat up my mother-in-law black and blue. When Tom was around 10, she tried to unalive herself and was taken to a psych ward. She is fine now and settled outside of town. Tom has no relations with his dad too. He hated his dad ever since that incident. That's why he cut off Mike from his life completely after my divorce, but he still came around for me. He helped me get back on my feet. He got me a place to stay. He helped me with my daughter Kelly a lot. It was around two years ago when we started having feelings for each other. We became friends with benefits and then confessed our feelings. We have now been dating for a year now and I couldn't be any happier. He is kind, sweet and gentle. He is the complete opposite of Mike. It still baffles me how despite growing up in the same household, they have two different personalities. We are still taking things slow. I still have trauma from what happened. Tom understands and is very patient with me. We decided to tell our close friends about our relationship. They were happy for us. This news reached to the ears of my ex. He called me and started spewing his usual nonsense. He said he knew I was fucking his brother. This is why I divorced him. I also got a message from father-in-law saying I am ripping his family apart. There were a few relatives from that side who said it was a bad idea that I'm dating my brother-in-law. I don't want this to be any form of trouble, but I like Tom. My daughter also likes him. I don't want her to lose him either. I don't think this was a mistake, but I'm getting told that it is. And we'll cover a few comments on this one before we move on to the update. Dove Chocolate Bar says Kelly deserves an actual good and present father and loving household. Sounds like you and Tom want to give it to her. Nothing else matters. Good luck to you both and your new family. Not the a-hole. Georgia says, not the a-hole, Tom sounds great. Your father-in-law and ex and family are abusive a-holes and no one cares what they think. Delete, block and ignore. Deal with your ex only through the court system. AHC says, I think it's weird to date your child's uncle. I feel like those waters you should never test. I'm here for the support, but why do that? And one more comment from Lily of the Valley who says, not the a-hole. Normally I don't agree with dating siblings, but this case is totally different. You and your daughter deserve happiness and security, and it sounds like Tom provides that for you. Then OP kindly comes back to update their post and says, I read your comments, though there weren't many, but 
I took every not the a-hole and you're the a-hole into consideration. It made me realize I need to have a serious chat with Tom about our relationship. I asked him if he is only with me for the sake of my daughter, and he said no. He loves Kelly, but he is with me because he has feelings for me, and he could see a future between us. I asked him if he is comfortable with the relationship dynamic we have because I was his brother's ex. He said that he doesn't care what other people has to say. There was a lot of back and forth about our conversation. He reassured me that he loves me and my daughter. If in the future we ever get married, he will definitely adopt her. And even if we break up for some reason, he will still visit and provide for Kelly. I'm glad we had this conversation rather than avoiding it. As for my ex, well, he came to demand Kelly. But Tom shut him down by telling him he should first pay the pending child support he owes me. That bastard doesn't even know when her birthday is. Tom threatened to sue Mike if he ever says anything about me and him. He told him, you can go back to your pathetic life with your mistresses and stop bothering us. I don't know how much he will listen, but for now, he will stay low. Lastly, we had to deal with my ex-father-in-law. Tom just sent him a message that he should stop bothering us when he never made an effort to have any sort of relationship with my daughter and that the only person that ripped apart their family is him because of his poor life decisions. He doesn't want to have any relations with Mike, my ex, because he has turned just like ex-father-in-law. Also, a lot of people raise questions to how we'll be able to explain things to our future kids about mine and Tom's relation. Well, we will tell them the truth. Also, I am not from America, so dating your ex-brother-in-law and sister-in-law is not frowned upon. I have had a few women from my churches who married their brother-in-laws either out of love or out of necessity. And me and Tom are not cheating. Tom has been single for a long time. He divorced his ex-wife when he was 29, which is 10 years ago. He doesn't have children of his own, so it won't be a problem from that angle. Anyway, thanks for everyone for all the kinds of support. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Economy Insurance says, am I the a-hole for not having cake for her birthday? Throw away as I have friends on Reddit. I, 34 female, have two boys, 10 male and 8 male. And my husband, Dirk, 40 male, has a daughter from another relationship, Gwen, just turned six female. We are a healthy household and we teach moderation and controlling how much we take when we have treats. We are also very active and every day strive to get the boys moving. However, Gwen is only here two weekends a month and her mother has the exact opposite attitude. In all honesty, that woman's blood type is probably ketchup. Similarly, Gwen is about 20 pounds heavier than a five-year-old girl is supposed to be. It makes me sad for this child and her health. So when we get her, I try to teach Gwen about healthy eating and moving around. We have the boys play with her so she's getting active and we make a distinction between foods that are healthy and ones that aren't. When I see one of the kids reaching for a treat food in the pantry, I'll ask, would you like to make a healthier choice? And Gwen is really getting it. She's always going for better choices now and is also going for fruit at home, which is really good. Gwen's birthday ended up falling on one of her weekends with us and while we were talking about what kind of cake to have, I asked Gwen about the healthier choice. My reasoning is, unfortunately, she's still getting all that garbage at home and it's just not good for a growing girl. She agreed and we decided to have some low-fat ice cream so she can still have a sweet treat. It's a brand Gwen loves and asks for every time that she's here, so she was happy with it. Until the next day, after she went back to mum, her mum called us furious. She said that when Gwen got home, she asked about her birthday cake with us and her cake. Gwen started crying because she really did want cake but didn't want to make a bad choice. She accused me of fat shaming her and her daughter and that I owe her a cake and a big apology. I'm just looking out for the health of a child in my care. But I never said Gwen couldn't have cake and, and she could have one if she said she wanted one. I suggested sticking to ice cream because I care. But did I go about it in the asshole way? And we'll start off with New Palpitation who says, You're the a-hole. She's five. Give the child goddamn cake on her birthday and then go for a family walk after. Also, for your information, the good choice slash bad choice talk is going to give her body image issues for the rest of her life. Neon Cactus Fields quotes a part of that and says this, The poor child is five years old. OP needs to just stop commenting on her stepdaughter's diet, period. Just based on OP's attitude here, I'm worried this little girl is going to develop an eating disorder by her preteens. 
I can absolutely understand why the mum was furious. Dad needs to step up and set some hard boundaries with his wife. Shell of them says, you're the a-hole. She's six. It was her birthday. You should have made her a cake. And furthermore, you're setting up for a restrictive eating disorder by policing her, all her food choices. If you have such a healthful home, why is there any accessible snacks that the kid shouldn't ever eat? If you only have her for four days a month, the food she eats with you isn't going to counteract the 27 other days of poor diet. If a dad is concerned, he can discuss it with a mother and pediatrician. All that said though, this reads like a troll post because it's hard to believe someone could be so heartless to a little girl. Breast clap says, you're the a-hole. It was her birthday. Asking her, would you like to make a healthier choice is manipulative. You're telling her that she's wrong and choosing what you want to make you happy. You're setting them up for food issues. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.